everyone, it's Victor, King of Morons. Welcome to another long ass video. Hey guys, it's Victor. Give me a break, man. Give me a flake, man. Using the 360 Kodak, I will give you two options to watch this video. One of them will be doing the 360 thing so you can watch as I drive. The other one will be where you can just watch uh, regular, you know. I'll give, you a, I'll give you an option like front and back camera, I don't know. A couple of op options, uh, a couple of different settings, which makes it pretty pretty cool. But don't complain if you don't like the 360, just switch to the other video, okay? Uh, hi. Um, lots of things to talk about. Uh, <clears throat> it's just gonna be a laundry video as we drive around. Do about 30 minutes of this. So, Walking Dead. Oh man, do you guys watch that? I like, I, lo I love that show, but um, yeah. You know, when you, you looking back, if you don't know what happened, I, I won't spoil it for you, but I was very disappointed with the ending of this season. But looking back, um, it's, you know, it's, it was there. Like, I, they, they couldn't have done it any other way. I'm not surprised at all. They sh it, it, it's, 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 it seems so... Uh, why didn't I see it coming? I mean, they, they, of course. <laughs> but it's still annoying. Um, one thing I don't like about the news media and Yahoo, etc., is that a lot of people, I don't like these glasses, a lot of people, uh, are trying to figure out what happened at the end, and they're analyzing it, and they're coming up with all these th theories, and apparently, we're all going to know the answer next season. Is this better? Let's see my old man glasses. My cool glasses. I just got these made. Uh, we're all going to know the answer soon. Yeah. Um, this, is, this is better. But why why does Yahoo spend all that time? All those those articles. I, I can't stand the way Yahoo is always telling you what you know what Daredevil got right about Elektra, or what uh, Superman got wrong about, uh, or what Zach whatever his name got wrong about Superman. You know, just shut up. Just shut up. I got a new tie. It's, uh, what is this? Somebody looked this up. Up press Sion, all silk. I never do this, but they have, in, in Japan, they have, like, these brand name resale stores. Which, emergency, I have emergency ties here in my bag. They have these brand name retail, uh, retail stores where you can buy, like, retail handbags and shit. And, I'm not retail, brand, brand name, but you can buy them used. And I, I was walking by, I never go in there because I don't buy handbags, but I found, I was walking by the other day, with, with I was with Ikari uh, Tomoko and Carlos, a uh, friend of mine from Miami, and he, uh, and, and I, I noticed the, uh, they had ties in there, I was like, oh cool, and old ties, I like old ties, and I like polka dot ties, but you rarely find a good polka dot tie, and it was only five bucks, so, you know, good use time. Who cares? <laughs> These are the little things that make you happy though. Little things in life. Little things in life make you happy. So, so my, my number one message is screw Walking Dead and screw, and screw um, Yahoo News for always doing things. I was talking to my dad about Walking Dead and he's like, I renounce that show from now on, which is funny because I understand how he feels. Um, that's the first thing I wanted to mention to you. Um, the second thing was something I thought was really interesting. Well, the, the big the big news this week, of course, is my son has started kindergarten, and uh, it's been a stressful week for my wife and myself. Not kindergarten, nursery school. I keep making those, making, mixing those up. He started nursery school, and we found a place fairly near the house. He hasn't officially started yet. He's kind of like training, I guess training wheels. We found a place fairly near the house. It's about uh, 20 minutes or so. And they, um, the way it works is they've got uh, all these different classrooms codenamed after animals. And, you know, you're, you're, you're either in, like, the bug group or the dog group or the giraffe group. I don't, I don't remember the code names, but, but um, and they also, they're also separated by age, of course. So you have the pre-first the pre one year old section. Then they have the one to two year old section, and they have the two to three year old section. 
Uh, and of course, my kids in the one to two year old section. And I think he's he's one of the he's on the younger end there. And uh, it's it was pretty stressful because um, although he, he doesn't cry whenever he meets new people, really, like he can deal with a few new people. If there's a whole bunch of people, or there's a like someone who's really huge, like like he cries around huge people because I go, oh, that person's huge. Dogs don't make him cry, they make him giggle. Barking dogs make him laugh. But anyway, took him to the nursery school. Everything's fine. Then we left him there, and when he, when he realized we were leaving him, he started crying. And I thought, you know, he'll get over it, because he was playing, they had all these toys there. They have these, all these rules too, by the way. I'm gonna have to do a whole video on, on how that works, all the rules connected to this, to having, uh, putting a kid in a nursery school, nursery school. For example, you can't bring toys. Like you can't bring your own toys, because I guess kids get jealous or something. But they have a whole bunch of toys there. Chapter three. Um, they have a whole bunch of toys. So he's playing and he plays with it. Anyway, we left him, and it's kind of a training wheel system. Like the first, what I mean by that is they, they ease you into it. So the first day, I think he was there for two hours, and the second day, three hours, and the third day, three hours. The first real day, the first, the, the actually, on the, the, the first day we went there was orientation day, so he just went to the classroom and looked around, and he's supposed to come back a few days later. Or the next day, so. So actually, it was four days, right? Orientation day, two-hour day, three-hour day, three-hour day. And next week, he does full a full, whatever it is, eight hours? He'll go in at 8.30, well, you can choose. I think they're open from 7.30. So depending on our schedule, we can go any, anytime between 7.30 and I think 7 p.m., right? Um, but um, anyway, he'll, he'll, be there for, he'll be there for more than three hours next week. And it's been really stressful this week because, uh, you know, he's stressed out uh, being away from his mom all day. And the first couple of days, we brought him home. And... It could be my imagination, but maybe he's always this way. Uh, but he seemed to be more rebellious than usual. And I pick him up, he's like, no, nah, let me alone. <laughs> and the second day, he, so the first day that he was there for two hours, he cried all day. He cried the whole time, apparently. Like, he cried the most of all the kids on the motorcycle. And then the second day, he cried a little bit less and played a little bit more. And the third day, he actually like, played in the sandbox, but he didn't eat his food. And when we went to pick him up, he wasn't crying, he was just sleeping, which I guess is an improvement. But it could also be like, oh, I'm just too upset to do anything else, I'll sleep, I don't know. But we brought him home, I brought him home, and, and I fed him, and he, you know, spoon in the mouth, and he was fine, which is good. So that's good, what's this? The 360 is good for things like this, look at this, like this, There's people doing work here. Now that's kind of interesting. Yeah, I'll tilt the camera so you can see. Look at that. Okay. Anyway, that's been the big news this week. Okay, personally, personal news. Um, also, had one of my uh, Patreon uh, students come and visit me. Uh, Carlos from Miami he takes uh, Japanese classes on Skype, and we had a good time just hanging out. It was a good guy. A couple of Patreon people came to the Hanami, and one guy named Roy, one named, a guy named Caroline. And I had a good time meeting them. But Caroline disappeared quickly. Um, Caroline, she's a little shy, so. But uh, I wish I had more time uh, just to hang out with her. Um, Roy was really cool. Uh, he was wearing a two and a half white sh shirt. That was really cool to see. I don't know if uh, he realized who he was. Um, but he was wearing a cool shirt, and he worn it so much that it had this kind of cool, worn out look to it. I think he's worn it more than I've worn mine. Well, I've got a couple too, so. You know, uh, Hanami, was, Hanami was okay. Uh, I, I, yeah, I gotta tell you, I got, I was really, I was really surprised that they were, that they chose this year to put it under no trees, <laughs> which uh, kind of makes sense if you're doing, if you're the one organizing it, because cleaning up after it is a pain in the ass because there's get, mud gets everywhere. Um, but. Um, but it was, you know, for me, the most important thing about Hanami is not the tree so much as the people. 
because I wanted I want I want to meet see the people and meet the people. Um, my, my, my the, the friends that I only get to see you know, once or twice a year in person. Most of them just meet 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 or talk on the phone or meet on the internet. I mean, so uh, so that was nice. Now the thing I really wanted to talk about, I thought you know, the thing that was interesting to me this week. Uh, well, there's a couple there's a couple things uh, that got me in the news, got me thinking. I feel like this should be like a podcast, but one of them is some 16-year-old girl is being charged with encouraging her 17-year-old boyfriend to commit suicide. Oh my god, I just realized. Yeah. Yeah, commit suicide. Um, And that sucks, right? That's terrible. Uh... But it's an interesting question, you know, is she really liable? Um, can you take, can you, can you, is that, is that freedom of speech to tell people you should kill yourself? And apparently after he died, she went, she put on a baseball game and fundraiser to save money for mental illness and shit. But it's just an interesting question, I'm interested to see what will happen. Of course, I hope, you know, I don't know, I, 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 I think you can't, I guess you should be held accountable for shit like that, you know? But at the same time, that means everyone on the internet who tells other people to kill themselves is also partially responsible, aren't they? Makes you think, um, go kill yourself, go die. If I say that to you right now on the internet, hey, anyone who wants this, kill yourself. And then one person does, am I liable? I don't think so. But there must be a line where you just hassle someone of course, we don't know what the situation is. What well, you know? Was he? Oh, the car was veered off. It'd be cool. It'd be cool if there was a crash right now. <laughs> uh, I'll put it on live leak. Um, if if he was calling her and that was her answer, then I would say there's less responsibility to her. If he's asking her, "What should I do?" and she says, "Kill yourself," then that's an honest answer, I guess. Even though it's really mean. But if she was calling him and hassling him. Like, you should kill yourself, then I think it should be different. There I am, and I can see myself in the reflection of that truck, which is pretty cool. Um, that's one thing. But the big news this week, and in Japan, is that they're the, ex, the ex-president, known on the internet as, or known on Wikipedia, at least on, on Google, as the most austere president in history, the ex-president of, of Uruguay, his name is Jose Mujica, I believe, and he's uh, 80 years old now. He's this overweight, uh, grandpa, Santa Claus type of character, who was the president of, of Uruguay from 2010 to 2015. And, let's see, let's see. realize... I just realized I have forgotten my wallet. I am driving without a wallet. Am I driving with a wallet? Oh no, there it is. <gasps> Thank God I have my wallet. My mind's all over the place. So, he, uh, he apparently was getting $10,000 a month salary. I might have some of the numbers wrong in Uruguay, but he opted to donate 9000 of it to charity and he lived off $1,000. He drives an old, crappy Volvo. His net worth, according to Japanese TV, I could be, of course, I could be wrong, I think it's 180,000 yen, which is about $1,700. He's an ex-farmer. He used to be a campesino or a farmer, but then he joined the revolution in Uruguay to fight against whatever capitalism and stuff. Uh, He might have gone to, I think he was, he was, he was, he might have gone to Cuba and met Fidel Castro or Mark, um, Che Guevara. I'm not sure about that part, but he did fight for the same cause. Uh, something that I that was brought to my attention by one of my old YouTube friends, um, Hello Rodney, back in the day. I don't know if Hello Rodney. I'm, I'm assuming he still makes videos. He's an artist and really cool guy on YouTube. Back in the day, um, he pointed out that Che Guevara was really uh, a killer. <laughs> And that he thinks it's wrong for people to, um, what's, what's it called? What's the word you call it? I can't word, I can't mean, um, 
Now, I want to say commercialized, but that's not the word. It's pe- people people champion his his image and whitewashing. I don't know if whitewash, brownwash, whitewash his uh, his actual historic presence. As in, basically, in, in, in summary, he was a killer. He was a bad guy, and we shouldn't be wearing T-shirts that that uh, you know make him out to be a hero. We shouldn't be. What's the word? Damn it! When you take someone and you completely make him out to be a hero, but he, but he wasn't. I forgot the word. So anyway, this guy Muhika Jose Muhika is in Japan now, and apparently gave a speech to all the presidents like a while ago. I don't know when it was, but they had clips of it in, in Japan, in Japanese news, and he was saying, "What if all, if everyone in India?" had the same car to family ratio as all the people in Germany. That's a summary. Which the way well the way he says it in Spanish and everything, it's much more powerful. Um, he goes, would there be enough oxygen in this world? Because of course with all the cars ruining the the uh, if everyone in India had a car, every family in India had a car, then this this world would just be full of pollution. Like we've got to do something. We're we're we are destroying ourselves and I started looking him up as as I'm watching Japanese TV and I'm looking at his history on Wikipedia and shit. And then Japan, and I'm telling my wife, oh, this guy was in jail for 13 years. And this guy was shot six times. This guy hurt to he was in solitary confinement for whatever. And everything I'm saying is is, is slowly happening on TV as they recreate his life. Japanese TV likes to like uh, go back and dramatize his life. And that's what they were doing, and it was really cool. Uh, so as I was speaking, they were basically telling I, everything I told my wife was being played out in a, in really bad, dramatic fashion on Japanese television. Where they get some, you know, foreign actor, not even actor, some foreigner who's, who's really not an actor. A lot of people do this, by the way. You get paid like ten thousand, uh, maybe a hundred bucks a day if you're lucky, to be on a, a Japanese TV show and to act out these these. To play, to recreate these real scenarios that happen, you know, they often do like crime stories or people's lives, but it's usually a crime story, something amazing. So they get the, they pay these 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 you know basically English teachers mostly to do it. So they got this guy to play, you know, Jose Mourinho. The guy who's getting shot. They they pay foreigners to pretend to shoot him and all that shit. Anyway, but here's the point. Here's the point. He, he said. He said the, the poorest people in the world are not the people who don't have money, it's the people who are... Because he realized after living in solitary confinement, being poor, that you don't you need very little to be happy. And that's the point. You need very little to be happy. Really. The problem is, we all we are always wanting more and more and more. And we've, been, we've created this consumer-based society where, like, this camera, you know, do, we, do I really need this camera? I mean, we create all these... These desires, and we try to we try to buy more and more and more, and that's what's killing our society. And we've got to change society. Uh, we've got to change the culture, the consumer culture. Is basically what he was saying. And that the richest people in the world are the people who are are happy with little, and the poorest people in the world are the people who are no matter how much they get, they're never happy. And it got me thinking about Regan. I don't know if you guys know Regan the Vegan. Who's a great guy? I love the guy. Uh, respect the guy very much. He's, he's a very interesting person, a nice person. Uh, and he's living in a van right now. And I've I've lived the austere life. I've lived with as little as possible. I, I traveled around South America for a year. Uh, two, two trips, a total, a total like ten months, and then another eight months. I don't remember. A year and a half total. And. Uh, you know, I had one t-shirt, one collared shirt, one undershirt, one pair of shorts, two pairs of underwear, you know, one pair of hiking shoes and one pair of flip-flops, and just everything I carry in my backpack, in my tent, you know, everything I had in my backpack. And it was, it was great, but, <laughs> here's where it becomes interesting. Um, nobody really, I, I'm sorry, but if you want to live with people, Eventually, your existence of living in a van or living in a backpack is going to become, um, in what's it called, inconvenient, inconvenient for your for your for your friendships. People want the little luxuries, the little comforts. The, the minor comforts are, are nice, and it's nice to have a like. I, two weeks, two years ago, I bought a two thousand dollar couch 
right? It was kind of for my wife's birthday. I paid for it all. But it was this huge, beautiful couch. And it was bought in advance, you're thinking about the baby, the coming baby, even though she wasn't even pregnant then. I thought someday we're going to have a baby. And part of the couch is this, like, big flat area where you can put the baby in and, you know, it won't roll and stuff. So, I don't know. Anyway, the first, the first uh, six months or, or so, I think just Maggie used it. Did we have Maggie then? I think we had Maggie then. I'm trying to think back. I'm trying to think back. Do, well, I don't know if we even had Maggie. I think we had Maggie then, though, only. But, it, I mean, it's a ridiculous, it's a ridiculous purchase, you know, and something I probably never would have done or even considered back in the day when I was a, a backpacker. Uh, but it got me thinking about, yeah, how how right he is. We just collect stuff, and I'm I'm terrible. Like I I've, I've got shirts that are 20 years old. I just don't throw them away. Uh, I really should, and I have books I don't want to throw away. These books, they, they for some reason I collect them like like medals. I read this book, and I got to keep it for some reason. Though the knowledge is theoretically in my head, right? But, it, but, it, but you know, on a small scale, I suppose like one person's not going to change anything. But, and I guess those things aren't really damaging anything. However, if you think about uh, the rest of the world and everyone getting cars and things like that, then yeah, we're slowly destroying this earth. And I, and he's in Japan telling people this, and this is like one of the worst places when it comes to consumerism. That's what I wanted to say. I was like, wow, this guy's coming to Japan. And, oh yeah, and they did this poll. They asked these Japanese people, what do you want most? What do you want most in life? And the number one answer was, 17% said time. And 16%, or 15.9, just, just a, only a percent difference or something. And one and a half percent difference was money. And what the hell was the third one? I forgot. Oh, the third one was nothing. So they asked people like, oh, betsini nai, which means, uh, yeah, I guess the answer was, the question must have been, what, is there anything, what is, what is the thing you want most in, in the world? And the third answer was like 15%, well, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied, which I think is good, but, uh, and I, I was kind of like, cool, number one wasn't money, right? That's cool, right? However, 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 uh, then I saw his speech, there's a, there's a site on YouTube called like Human or something, I don't know. For some reason, I stumbled across this speech in Spanish with English subtitles. It's 10 minutes long. It's an interview by of, of Jose Mujica. He's just talking to the camera with a black background. And he's basically saying uh, what I've just repeated, you know, only much shorter. <laughs> much shorter. But the one thing he said that I thought was interesting was that we are not paying for things with money. We're paying for things with time. It takes time to earn that money, right? And then you take that money and you buy something. So you, it's not really it's not really money that you're using. It's time. And you've only got one life and you're never you know there's one thing you cannot buy is more time. You can't you can't buy another life. Unless you're Don, Johnny Depp in that movie where he puts his uh, puts his uh, personality to a computer. That would be cool. I'm looking forward to that day, but but it got, um, it got me to thinking that, uh, yeah, I mean, as young as I feel, despite what a lot of, a lot of you, so a lot of you guys are young, really young, and you think, you know, you get to, you get to be my age and you think you're ancient, but believe me, when you get to, when you get to, to be my age, you're not going to feel that way. Uh, well, and of course, it depends on you. Like, some of you will feel that way, but I, I don't feel that way. I feel young as ever. I feel like I can do everything. But, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm not an idiot. I do realize that there are certain limitations now with my age. I'll never, never be in the Olympics again. I can't run as fast as I used to. I'm not as strong. Well, I'm actually pretty strong. I think I'm not stronger than I've ever been. And things start to happen to your body that you just can't control. But mentally, you know, um, not much changes. Not much changes. Though, I got to say that... Uh, yeah, and, I, and in many ways, I'm extremely still immature. I, was, and I love destroying people on the internet with comments and stuff. Which I really, uh, I do my best to. I'm, I think I'm better than in the, in the past, and I, I try not to lie. I, I'm better letting things that flow off me. And criticism doesn't bother me so much. I'm more uh, confident in, in who I am, etc. 
So of course there, there have been changes. Oops, red light. There have been changes in my. Oh, what's this? Been, yeah, there have been changes, but um, as I've grown, but this the spirit of who I am is basically the same. I'm still a young person in my head, in my heart. So you'll see that when you get older. Uh, but the truth is, I'm running out of time. Right? And there's there's certain. When, yeah, when you get to, when you get to be older, you start thinking, well, I got to start making certain choices, right? How am I gonna How am I gonna live the rest? I'm, I'm, this is a half of my life is over now, so uh, I've got to figure out how I can enjoy, enjoy the rest of my life. And that means, you know, you really got to start thinking, do I really want to work this much? Because I work all the time. I'm very guilty of that, but I like working. So I, for me, working is so so bad. It's not like, a, it's, and I, I enjoy my work. It's not like I'm one of the factory. Anyway, so those are the things that I've been thinking of today, uh, this week. Those are the things that are on my mind. Another thing that's on my mind is I've really got to improve my Japanese because my son is soon going to overtake me. He's going to go to school and get taught everything, uh, you know, everything, everything. In a way that I never did, so there's gonna there's gonna be a big. I'm gonna be completely unable to answer his questions very soon, unless I step up and start uh, teaching myself or uh, refreshing. You know, because I, I I learned everything once. I learned all about history and geography, and, but I don't remember science or math anymore. So I might to try to give up on that. But but I learned all the kanji. I got to go back and relearn them so I can teach them and tell them what they mean learn how to write them properly again because with time you know with computers you get you get out of practice you don't you don't remember how to do things anyway that's what i'm thinking of these days thanks for watching guys i don't really have anything else to add to this just a, just a long ass laundry blog as we cruise around the southern part of japan well south of nagoya at least as i uh go to my job on a saturday Yes, I'm going to do a business class now. And in the back of a yellow, what is this? If you got to the end of the video, tell me what's your favorite. Do you like Porsches? This is a Porsche GT4. GT4. Is it nice? I don't know. I've never been. That's one thing. I'm not a super consumerist. Like, I, I've never had a desire to buy a really expensive car. A camera, yes, but a car, no. All right, thanks for watching, guys. I would get a, I would get a Harley Davidson, though. Yeah. Yeah. What would you do if you were rich? Would you what would you do? Would you would you would you spend a lot of money? That's the question. What would you do if you're really rich? Would you spend a lot of money? Would you get a, a Porsche GT4? Would you get a Harley? I think I'd get a Harley, I gotta I gotta be honest. I think I'd get a Harley. My wife wouldn't be happy about me driving, but I get a Harley. I would only take it out once in a while. Not, not to make her too nervous because I've had a couple of motorcycle accidents in the past. Alright guys, <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. If you need help, then dial your operator.